months ago, I set out to find the most average MLB position player, so I feel that a follow-up looking for the most average pitcher is only natural. We'll first be looking at the 2019 season to find the most average starting pitcher, relief pitcher, and the most average pitcher regardless of usage. After that, we'll expand our range to 2017-19 to to find the most average pitcher in each of these categories over a three-year span. So let's get started. My name is Bobby, and welcome back to Stat Stories. This video was suggested by Redditor James, so thank you and remember to leave your video suggestions in the comments. So how do we go about finding the most average pitcher? Well, staying consistent with what I do on this channel, this will be a statistical examination, and I chose 11 different stats to measure our pitchers in. The first three are our run prevention metrics, ERA minus, FIP minus, and XFIP minus. These are just park and league adjusted versions of earned run average, fielding independent pitching, and expected fielding independent pitching. They are centered around 100 being league average, and since allowing fewer runs is a good thing, lower scores are better. For example, Mike Soroka had an ERA minus of 60 in 2019, meaning his park adjusted ERA was 40% better than the NL average. And Martin Perez had an ERA minus of 110, meaning he was 10% worse than league average, in his case, the American League. Obviously for our purposes, we're looking for pitchers to be as close to 100 as possible. We'll also be looking at strikeout percentage, walk percentage, whip or walks plus hits per innings pitched, home run per fly ball rate, and left on base percentage, which is just the percentage of base runners a pitcher strands on base. And I also looked at ground ball, fly ball, and line drive percentages. As far as my process goes, I just removed anyone who stood out in a particular stat until I had a short list of three to five players. The run prevention metrics had the least amount of leeway, meaning a pitcher needed to be pretty close to average in these categories. Our remaining pitching stats were in the second tier and had a bit more room for deviation, and for the batted ball rates, I allowed for the most deviation. So let's look at our 2019 most average starting pitcher. To be in consideration, a pitcher needed at least 100 innings pitched as a starter in 2019, and that gave us 113 pitchers to look at. Pitchers who met this standard but also had a large number of innings as a reliever were still considered, but this doesn't really matter as our shortlist consisted of Homer Bailey, Dylan Bundy, Merrill Kelly, and Daniel Norris. And after comparing these four, Bundy was the pick for most average. Comparing him to the MLB average starting pitcher, Bundy was almost spot on in terms of run prevention. The reason ERA minus and XFIP minus aren't exactly 100 is because starters give up slightly more homers than relievers. Bundy strikes out and walks more batters than the average starter, though his whip is about on par. His left on base percentage and home run per fly ball rate are give or take a percentage point away from average, and his batted ball rates are all relatively close to average. Next up, we have most average relief pitcher of 2019. I looked at pitchers with at least 50 innings pitched in relief, which gave us 149 to look at. Pitchers who also had significant innings as a starter were still considered, but again, none made our shortlist, which consisted of Luis Sessa, Robert Gesellman, Yoshihisa Hirano, and Nick Ramirez. It was a tough call between Sessa and Ramirez, but in the end, Ramirez was the pick. ERA, FIP, and XFIP tend to fluctuate more for relievers, but Ramirez is really close to average in the latter two. His strikeout rate was a bit below average, but walk rate and whip were pretty close. His left on base and homer per fly ball rates were also relatively close, as were the batted ball rates. Compared to starting pitchers, finding an average relief pitcher was a bit more difficult, but we'll touch on that more in a bit. For now, we need to determine the most average pitcher of 2019, regardless of usage. Looking at all pitchers with at least 50 innings pitched, we end up with 341 names. And our pick was just Dylan Bundy again. I won't go through each stat again, but compared to the MLB average for all pitchers, his strikeout rate, walk rate, and whip were essentially spot on. So congrats to you, Bundy. You're our 2019 most average pitcher. Now, what if we expanded our search beyond 2019 and looked for the most average pitcher over the last three seasons? Looking at 103 pitchers with at least 300 innings pitched as a starter since 2017, we arrived to a short list of Kevin Gosman, John Lester, Tanner Roark, and Anibal Sanchez. This was a super close one to call, but I think both Gosman and Lester deserve a mention. 
Since we're just looking at starters for now, Gosman gets the edge in ERA minus, while Lester gets the edge in FIP minus, and the slightest of edges in XFIP minus. Strikeout rate is a tie, walk rate is a slight edge to Lester, whip also goes to Lester, left on base percentage goes to Gosman, home run per fly ball rate also goes to Gosman, who is right on the dot with this stat, and then in all the batted ball rates, Gosman has the edge. You can't go wrong with choosing either as the most average starting pitcher, but if you include batted ball rates, Gosman gets the edge. If not, then Lester is the pick. Moving on to relievers over our three-year span, and we have 87 pitchers with at least 150 innings pitched in relief. And our shortlist ended up just being two people, Luis Garcia and Kelvin Herrera, with Herrera being our pick. Herrera is essentially spot on with the run prevention metrics. He doesn't strike out or walk as many batters as the average reliever, but is pretty close in whip, left on base percentage, and home run per fly ball rate. And as for the batted ball rates, Herrera is moderately close. So now we come to our final selection, and that is the most average pitcher overall from 2017 to 19. We had 313 pitchers with at least 150 innings pitched in that time frame, and the pick is John Lester. While he and Gosman were very close when looking at the average starter, the MLB averages for all pitchers tip the scales in Lester's favor. While I don't want to go through all the stats again, his run prevention metrics are all close to 100, and his home run per fly ball rate is now closer to average than Gosman's. So John Lester, I crown you the most average pitcher in baseball. And most average is not a bad title. I said this in my most average position players video, but average players are still very valuable, especially average pitchers. Below average players are constantly being replaced by more guys who also end up being below average. But those players who can provide league average production or even slightly below average production will stick around. You see this more often in the starting rotation with the label innings eater being thrown around. With bullpens, you see a lot more turnover in personnel which is why finding an average reliever with the requisite number of innings was more difficult. But again, just remember that average players are a good thing to have, because you could always be doing much worse. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, leave a like, share it, and click subscribe to help the channel grow and reach more people. Leave your suggestions in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.